Um, just a few thoughts though before we take uh, take bread and wine or these emblems uh, together. Um, let me ask you, what's the best celebration meal you've ever been part of? The best celebration meal you've ever been part of, it might have been the the occasion, it might have been the food, it might have been the company, it might have been the atmosphere, but just briefly, best celebration meal you've ever been part of. What would you say? Leon? Our reception. Your reception is the correct answer. It's on camera, Sarah will get to hear that. I am recording this for the sake of those who aren't here today. So uh, that is the correct answer. But any other answers apart from the reception for those of us who are married? All right, any others? Best meal? What would you say? I would say any time when I've, I've been together with, you know, my, my family and close friends, it's always session care. Absolutely, every Christmas. <laughs> Christmas. Um, but I, I particularly, I don't know why this one stands out. I mean, I, I remember lots of our significant birthdays. Um, but I, I think because I was a child at the time and I found it really exciting, I remember Dad sort of trying to plan your 40th. And uh, obviously, I was only about a couple of years ago. It was only about right? Five years ago yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I clearly remember sort of dad trying to organise, you know, mum's, uh, my, my auntie and uncle and, and grandmother, yeah, and, and that being quite, feeling quite exciting. Um, yeah. Special occasion for the family. Yeah. One more, Danny? So the best, I think, after maybe the reception meal, probably the second best meal I've shared is probably with Becky where I'd organised to go and eat. And she says I never actually officially asked to be my, her girl, my girlfriend. He did I, I <laughs> But basically, at that point in time, I was living in Glasgow. Right. I organised with a friend and a fan that I was going to get on a flight at six in the morning to arrive at Watford at eight. And then later that day, take my nearly new girlfriend, Becky, this is like 16 years ago, to the Oxo Tower in London. Mm. And uh, I called her in the morning outside her house saying, how are you doing, babe? No, and I arranged for some flowers. And I said, oh, by the way, I lied. I'm not in Glasgow. Look outside your window. <laughs> and I was there. <laughs> and I basically organized a whole day for us to go to the Oxford Tower for a meal. And it was just the most romantic time. Wow. Wow, Dan. Set, setting new standards. <laughs> And I, I, didn't, I didn't know about the Oxford Tower because <laughs> my, uh, uh, my first official date with Sarah was at the Oxford Tower. The Oxford oh, Tower. Really? really? Well, there must be something about it. I don't you remember what I ate. Must be a woodhead thing, right? I don't think. You don't, we don't, you're not supposed to remember what you ate. You're supposed to remember who you ate with. Yes, exactly. I, I think that is that's kind of the point. Yeah. Special meals, are, we remember them, right? Where, when it's, whatever the reason is that it's special, that's what we... Uh, hold on to. I think tonight after the football, England fans are certainly hoping that we can celebrate, perhaps with some good food. I, I don't know, but we'll see. What I'd like to talk about today is altars and tables. All right, so describe to me an altar. How would you describe an altar? What is an altar? What's it like? What's it smell like? What does it look like? What's going on on an altar? Tell me about an altar. A high table made of, could be made of wood. Imagine this is an altar for a minute. What else? What's happening on an altar? Sacrifice. Sacrifice, which means Death. fire. I always think blood. It's about time. So yeah. Blood. Sorry? Blood. Blood. <laughs> blood, death, fire. I mean, this is made of wood, and some altars were wood, but most were stone or, or whatever. The, if this was an Old Testament altar, uh, it would be scorched. There'd be ashes, there will be blood or blood stains. Um, if the sacrifice was happening, it might be uh, vegetation, it might be, uh, like, but it might be a bird, it might be an animal. And so, you know, it's, I mean, a pretty gruesome kind of picture that most of us would not like, especially the vegans amongst us, I guess. Uh, but, but even so, even so, uh, vegetable sacrifices were made, of course, and, uh, and so on. Um, in the Old Covenant, sorry, and often high, remote, large, horns on the sides of the altar in the, uh, in the temple period, um, often on a mountain, uh, on a high place, and that kind of thing. Um, in the Old Covenant, there were three main kinds of 
sacrifices or uh, festivals. And there was more than three festivals, but they were of three types. One was a sin offering or a festival for that. One was a fellowship offering and one was a thanksgiving offering. So three different kinds of sacrifices, sin sacrifices, thanksgiving sacrifices and fellowship sacrifices. And the fellowship offering was the one where you brought your, your sacrifice and you could eat some of it. So the other sacrifices, like the sin offering, the priests could eat some of it, but you didn't get to eat. But there were fellowship sacrifices and festivals where you got to eat some of your produce. So you'd bring it along, the priest would get some, but you'd get the rest. And where would you eat this sacrifice? Where would you eat this leftover from the actual sacrifice? You'd eat it round the altar. The reason why there are so many animals sometimes sacrificed in the Old Testament when there's a big festival is not because God wanted a lot of animals, it's because they had a lot of people to feed. If you're going to sacrifice an 800 pound bull, you're going to need a lot of people to eat it with you. Yeah. So those were only for very big events. So it was a feast. The Thanksgiving festivals were a feast and you ate together. Like in Deuteronomy 12 verse 27, Present your burnt offerings on the altar of the Lord your God, both the meat and the blood. The blood of your sacrifices must be poured beside the altar uh, of the Lord your God, but you may eat the meat. You may eat the meat. It was a joyful event, these Thanksgiving sacrifices. Deuteronomy 27. Build the altar, field stones, or field stones burnt, uh, offer your burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. Sacrifice, fellowship offerings there eating them and rejoicing, and this is the key phrase, in the presence of the Lord. So you were doing it together as a community, but you were doing it in the presence of the Lord. I think this is helpful th for thinking about our New Testament understanding of the Lord's Supper, as we have an enhanced presence of the Lord. And so we don't just have an altar, I'm not sure it's gonna work with the breeze, but we have a proper table, right? This really is more of a table than, this is going to be interesting, let's see. Will it work? Will it stay? Let's see. And of course, if you're coming to a feast, you need a knife and fork. So this is a bit more like, I think, what we should be thinking about when we think about the Lord's Supper. It's a supper, right? Jesus ate the Last Supper. They had a meal. Maybe not a tablecloth quite like this one, which I think might have belonged to my grandmother looking at the design. I think it actually did. Uh, but nonetheless, a meal, a thanksgiving meal. That's the focus of the Lord's Supper. There's a difference between an altar and a table. For us, the table of the Lord's Supper is not the altar. For us, the cross is the altar. So in the New Covenant, the cross represents the altar. That's where the sacrifice for sin was made. But we gather around this not to do with sin. We gather around this for thanksgiving. That's what uh, the New Covenant is all about. The experience of reconciliation and fellowship is what we enjoy together around this table. Reminder of our reconciliation with God and our fellowship with Him, with Christ, because He's with us and in us, and His Spirit is with us, and fellowship with one another. This is the experience of communion, not a search for atonement. The atonement has been done. The cross is the one-time altar event for a Christian. It's done. It's dealt with. The Lord's Supper is an event of thankfulness and fellowship in communion with and in the presence of Jesus Christ. So that's why Jesus, when he took the bread and he broke it, he gave thanks for it. He, said he, gave, he says he gave thanks in Luke 22. He broke it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And it says in the same way he took the cup and he gave thanks for the cup and said, this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you so that we have fellowship around a table. Communion is with him and with one another in celebration and thankfulness. And so what I'd like to ask us to do personally is take a moment and then someone can pray for us to think about what you're most thankful for and what Jesus has done for you. What are you most thankful for? As you think about the, the, the bread and the wine, this table of thankfulness, what's perhaps something you are most thankful for? Maybe meditate on that for a moment. Think about that. Because of the altar cross, we now have the fellowship table. 
and Christ is with us, what, what is it that we're most thankful for before we take some bread and wine? I'm gonna leave these here and just come up and grab one when you want to. When you're ready, come and take one of these. You just peel the top back for the wafer and then the, uh, the, the juice is inside there. So I'm gonna take myself away. Let's spend some time thinking about thankfulness.